Hey my friends, what's happening? Welcome to Love Always Adventure Often. This is the long awaited, like two weeks awaited video of me explaining why we've decided to sell our schoolie and what's next for us. And uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> this is the first video I've done that I've been nervous and I can't even figure out why, but I'm excited to share with you some of our ideas, some of our thoughts, all of that kind of stuff. You guys have been so supportive up to this point. And, uh, and I really, really appreciate that. So here we go. Hey there, friends. We're the Browns, Chad, Katie, Addison, Kenya, and Milo. We live for love and adventure. In November of 2017, we sold our house and most our possessions in pursuit of simplicity and freedom. Two months later, we bought a 2001 Bluebird school bus to make our home. After building out the bus for six months, we've been on the open road full time. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. We're stoked for you to join our journey and hope you enjoy watching our videos as much as we love making them. So hit subscribe and enjoy the adventure. So I just want to start this video really quick by talking about a logical fallacy called the sunk cost fallacy. If you haven't heard of it before, the sunk cost fallacy basically states that we base our value on things um, based on the work or the money or something, some sort of sunk cost that we have put into that thing or that idea. Um, and, and we put value on that thing or that idea because of everything we've done to get it in the past. And this can, you know, this can have some good aspects to it. This is what keeps us working hard for the things that we think we want. But there's also some downsides, and that is that we will sometimes as humans convince ourselves to stay with something that is no longer working for us or that's no longer healthy for us or healthy for uh, the ones that surround us. And so sunk cost fallacy is something that, in my opinion, I have tried to recognize in my daily life. So just going into this video, I wanted to give that context um, because it's very much what is happening here. We're getting a lot of criticism. I shouldn't say a lot. We're getting some criticism, which I'm fine with. Every but anytime I talk about criticism on my channel, people jump in and, and say it's okay or don't listen to the haters or whatever. I'm not, but I still want to explain because I think their opinion and their comments are just as valuable as the ones that are encouraging us and with us no matter what. So um, I just wanted to give that context We're getting because we're getting some criticism saying, well, you've only been doing this for three months or a little more than three months. You know, you need to get more time, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I just wanted to start out with that context because for us, it's been more than enough time for us to figure out what we need to do. I also wanna to add to that, that we have done way too much work and made way too many hard decisions to now settle into something that is not working for us. You know, we set out to develop uh, an intentional life that we loved and that worked for our families. And for us to now settle into something that's not working doesn't make sense. It, it, it makes all of that work and it makes all of that, um, that effort and those hard decisions it devalues them in my opinion. And so it's only best for us to follow our truth and, uh, and figure out something else. So we've had a lot of people guess as to reasons why we are selling our schoolie. And I wanted to address some of those that are not true first. So it is not true that we are selling our schoolie because of fuel costs. The way we have traveled, I mean, it took us over three months to get from Salt Lake City to Seattle area. And um, if that tells you anything, I mean, that tells you that we move really, really slow and we stay in areas for a long time, which was always the plan. And so fuel costs, I think we've spent maybe like $650 on fuel and we still haven't even burnt all of that. I have some of that still sitting in the gas tank. So fuel has not been an, uh, a deciding factor whatsoever. In fact, we've been surprised at how little we've had to fuel, fuel the bus. Another one that a few people have guessed is RV parks not letting us in. Well, uh, we haven't experienced that. We've stayed at a few RV parks and nobody has 
batted an eye at our schoolie. Um, I know there are some that do, and, and I'm not debunking that as a general idea, but I am saying that's not that didn't play into our decision at all. Um, and besides the fact that we were never really interested in staying in RV parks, uh, we're much more interested in boondocking, uh, staying in campsites, which are different than RV parks. So it doesn't have anything to do with not being led into RV parks. Thirdly, which is my most favorite to debunk right now, is that we've been planning this all along. That it was a ploy to do something. I don't even know what our motivation would be to work on a bus for six months on top of all the other things that we're doing, plus creating an eight month plan with stops and, you know, lining up places to park and all of that kind of stuff. I'm not quite sure what our motivation would be, but no, we didn't have this planned all along. Um, we did, however, know very early on that it probably was not for us. And we gave it a good two months after we had that idea. Okay, so the actual reason you're watching this video, why did we decide to sell our schoolie? Well, all of the reasons that I'm about to list of why we're, we decided to sell our schoolie all have to do with driving it. I wanna make it very clear that when we are parked, we have zero complaints. So the first one is speed. The school bus moves so slow. So our school bus engine, drivetrain, all of that kind of stuff was built to go around the city and not for the freeway. Now, I've had a lot of people comment and say, what's your hurry? What, where, are you, where do you need to get to? And I totally get that. And in fact, some of those comments really helped me take a step back and reevaluate. But I will say this, we've really enjoyed driving 50 miles per hour, but that's on the flat and the downhill. If we hit any type of grade, two, three, or 4%, we're down to 30 miles per hour sometimes 20 miles per hour. And for me, it was, we were a road hazard is, is how I felt. And so as soon as we're going 25 miles per hour on a 65 mile, 70 mile per hour highway, and people are, are you know, doing dangerous things to get around us, all that kind of stuff, we become a hazard to the rest of the freeway. Now, this is just my anxiety. This is just my perception. Don't get me wrong. If you're driving your school bus at 25 miles per hour on a 65 mile per hour highway and I pass you, I will wave and I will smile and I will be like, hell yeah, they're getting it done. But for me, it was my anxiety, it was my perception, and it was us inside the bus that I felt was in danger and the people that are around us that were in danger. So the speed has so much to do with not wanting to drive around in our school bus. All right, my friends, the next is size. There's no denying it, we went way too big. 40 feet plus a towed tow vehicle uh, is just way too big with the, for the way that we want to travel. So let me tell you a quick story. The last driving leg that we did was from Florence, Oregon. You probably saw it in our last vlog if you watched that, was from Florence, Oregon to the Seattle area. Now we chose to go up the coast and um, going up the coast was a beautiful drive. It was an incredible experience, but I was anxiety ridden the entire time. Once again, all of these things have everything to do with me. However, if you're thinking about diving into schoolie life um, and driving around, you might wanna consider these. If you're prone to driving anxiety or any of that kind of stuff, um, you should definitely consider them, not let them deter you, but see if you can drive a bus a little bit before you make the, the whole commitment. But anyway, we drove up the coast from Florence, Oregon to Seattle area. And the way that we wanted to travel or the way we envisioned traveling in our schoolie was just stopping willy nilly wherever we wanted to. When there was something that looked really cool, stop and look. Or if we saw a road that was a side road that looked really interesting, turn off and go down that road. And guess what? With our size, it's just not realistic. We passed probably, I don't know if I were to guess, 30 stops on the coast that I wanted to stop so bad and look, but we couldn't because of our size and because it was on the other side of the road or where you know we have our tow vehicle and so we've got to worry about that we could go park the bus in a Walmart parking lot somewhere and then take the jeep out to those stops but that's a 
a lot more time, and then our bus is sitting unattended somewhere, which is another issue. And so um, size has killed us. The way we want to travel, the way that we want to adventure and be spontaneous, it has literally been impossible. So now we're thinking, we've got to go do the coast again in a smaller vehicle because there's so much we didn't see. Another one that goes right right along with that is parking. It's, it's the same story. Like we could not find places to park in most of those places that we wanted to sightsee along the highway, uh, along the 101. And that wasn't a unique experience. Also in the mountainous areas of Oregon where we wanted to explore some more, we couldn't take the bus in. If we wanted to do a hike that had a small parking lot, we were out of luck. Either that or go find a place to park the bus, leave it unattended, and then drive the Jeep there. Uh, so parking is a, is a giant consideration. So along those same lines is towing. I know a lot of families that don't tow a vehicle and do it uh, just with their bus, which is awesome. I, I don't know how though, because for me, I mean, I'm still working, so I still have to travel to my shoots. Um, and at the same time, like when we would set up camp, when we're boondocking, we want to go kayaking at a lake that's 10, 15 miles away, we have to pack up the whole bus again, get everything secure, and then go out to the lake that we want to kayak or paddleboard. And to me, that just, we didn't want to travel that way um, necessarily. And so, and, and the bus is quite a bit to, to maneuver, especially in those spots that we wanted to get back into. So uh, you can see all of this is coming back to size, it's coming back to parking, um, and then also towing a vehicle. We had, in our minds, towing a vehicle was the only option so that we could access some of the things that we wanted to access. And uh, so we decided to tow a Jeep, which made us a lot longer, but it also made my anxiety go through the roof. So even with assisted braking, even with our you know diesel Cummins engine, it's only the 5.9, so I, I realize now that that's a bit smaller, um, towing has just been something that I uh, I dread. You know, every time that we hooked up our $25,000 Jeep Wrangler to the back of the bus, I couldn't help think about all of the things that could go wrong. And that's a lot of money, and that's a lot of danger that we're strapping to the back of our bus. Potential danger. I get that people do it all the time with no problems, and I'm not saying that all of these reasons are completely logical, but for me, they caused enough anxiety to where um, I didn't want to strap the Jeep to the back. Uh, braking scared me. Accelerating scared me. Every small grade that we hit scared me. Um, so as you can see, there's a theme here. A lot of this was my anxiety uh, driving the bus and getting us safely, getting our family safely to the next destination or, or not even the next destination, exploring um, and, and trying to park and see the sites that we wanted to see along the way. So towing has been a huge, 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 huge deterrent for us to continue with the schoolie. Next, comfort. And I've talked about this in a couple of other videos, so this is gonna be no surprise, but driving comfort. I'm only willing to do about 150 miles per day. Anything beyond that just leaves me very, very tired, me, leaves me kind of frazzled. And then af after the drive, I'm not very fun to be around. <laughs> so when we pull into a space and I'm a bit rattled from the drive, the temperature is so hot with the engine right there. We, we have a polar. Um, which, and it's not a dog nose, and so the heat and the noise coming off of that engine is so intense um, that, you know, a couple hours, three hours of it right next to me is pretty much all I can take. And so we, we, we get to our destination, pull in, and I'm just rattled, and I'm no fun to be around. And so travel days are, have been really, really difficult for us. Besides the fact that and this is something we obviously knew going into it, but we didn't realize how much we would dislike it, is not having a, a passenger experience. When we road tripped in our van, in our transit van, Katie could sit right next to me, we could open up the map, and we could look at side roads, we could look at attractions, we could turn up the music, and just enjoy each other's company. It was like we had so much time together. 
But now with the bus, she's behind me. It's too loud to talk and it's too loud to play music except for in my headphones. And so it just is not the driving experience that we enjoy together. And so basically what it was, especially when the weather was hot, is the windows are open, so the wind's just whipping inside the bus. The engine is really loud, the engine is really hot. I've got my headphones in and she's dealing with the kids alone. Um, and and we're not even, that's not a time for us to bond and be together. Now I wanna talk just a second for, about the anxiety that all of this caused for me. And um, you know, I talked about it in the context of driving, but, I, f I started to notice something very, very interesting about myself as we were stopped as well. And the anxiety didn't stop when we stopped driving. Uh, what would happen is that I would know, I would typically know the next time we were going to start driving the bus again, when I needed to hook that Jeep up to the back of the bus, needed to get behind the wheel, uh, put on pants so the heat didn't bother my leg, put on the earplugs so the noise, all of that kind of stuff. And I would think about that day in and day out while we were stopped. And it would create an, an amount of anxiety in me while we were stopped and adventuring it was always like this, this troll on my shoulder, for lack of a better term, that's just whispering to me like, you know, in a couple days, you're going to need to drive again. And, and you know how that makes you feel and all that kind of stuff. And so um, honestly, it, it didn't, I wouldn't say it ruined, that's a little extreme, but it was absolutely an element of all of the exploring, camping, um, all of that kind of stuff that we've done. And I just got to the point where I, I didn't want to deal with that any longer. So the next natural question to ask is, what's next? And I know in a video two weeks ago, I said we're looking to downside to a, downsize to a different vehicle. We're still figuring that out. There's a few things weighing on that decision. And that is homeschool is not particularly working that well for our family. And I'm just being completely open and honest. I haven't thought ahead of time of talking about this stuff, but I just wanted to let you know, as we consider full-time travel, continuing full-time travel and what vehicle we'll be in and that kind of stuff, we also have to consider some of the life uh, things that, that we're up against and homeschool is one of those. So a second element of life that we're considering is community. We can't help but recognize the fact that all of us have felt a loss of social community in our lives, like real life face-to-face -face community. Online communities are awesome. They're great. You can really niche down and find your people, but it doesn't replace face-to-face -face community. And we've felt like we've lost that a little bit. I mean, we've made some incredible friends on the road, like amazing friends. But then in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, we leave them and we move on and then we make new friends and then we leave them. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like we're building or investing into a community. So that's another thing that we're thinking about. How can community, real life community look on the road? And can we get that same feeling? All right, my friends, so that's it. That's why we have decided to sell our schoolie. Uh, I'm an open book. I want to answer any questions. I'm having a really difficult time keeping up with the comments on our channel. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a live Q&A on, on YouTube where people can jump on live and ask questions. And I will give the very best answers I can about anything schooly, um, why we've decided to sell, clarify, clarifying any of the points that I made in this video, all of that kind of stuff. We're going to do that on Thursday, the 13th of September at 12 o'clock noon Pacific time. If you wanna jump on there, ask me any questions, I will be more than happy to answer those questions as best that I possibly can. Uh, in addition, if you're watching this after that date, you could probably go find that Q&A video on our channel and uh, maybe get some of your questions answered that way. Otherwise, I'm gonna to try to still, I'm still gonna to try to keep up on the, on the comments on our channel and our videos, so please don't hesitate to, to leave your questions and comments. Even if I don't get to answering them, please know that I've read them. I hope this video has answered most of the questions out there about why we're selling our schoolie. Thank you so much for watching. 
I'm so stoked to see what our story holds. And of course, I'm gonna continue to document it. I love doing this. I love running our YouTube channel, love interacting with you. And I love having the videos as an archive for our family. And so I'm gonna continue and uh, hope you'll stick around. Remember, love always, adventure often. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.